It says, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. James wrote these books, these chapters, for the Christians back then that were navigating life's trials. They were navigating life's hardships. And he wanted to encourage them. And so today I pray that you will leave this place encouraged. But I also pray that you'll leave here challenged. I pray that when you walk out of here today, in Jesus' name, you will look at things in a, in a different perspective that maybe you've never had before when it comes to, to what life throws at us. We have an opportunity for endurance to be built. My name is Brendan Maxwell. I'm the redemption minister here at the Well Marshfield. It's our recovery ministry, uh, but man, Pastor Dylan is in Springfield today preaching, and it's an opportunity for me, and, and I'm very thankful to be with you guys. It's an honor, it's a privilege, and I'm excited for, for what God has in store. James 1, 2 through 4, and also verse 12, say, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, any kind, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So why does this matter? Why, why are we going to talk about this today? Because I believe that if you want to grow in your faith, you must learn how to endure through your trials. Amen? Father, with that in mind, we come into prayer. And God, I just believe that, that you're crazy enough to meet these people here in this auditorium this morning. God, I believe that you're crazy enough to, to speak through me, somebody who was lost, somebody who was broken, somebody who has been set free. God, I just believe it. Your word tells us that it's true. Your word tells us that, man, when these trials come, when temptation comes, when things that were out of our control come our way, you never leave us. You never forsake us. You never turn your back on us. And in fact, you might even be trying to teach us something. And so God, I just pray that over each one of us, that we would be willing to receive what it is you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, you guys can be seated. So I want to ask you guys to think about a defining moment in your life, a moment where maybe you were, you're faced with the decision to either give up or to push on. Maybe it was a, a medical diagnosis. Maybe it was a, a letter in the mail that says, we're coming after you financially. We'll see you in court. Or maybe it was, uh, man, somebody has done something to you that you had no control over. And it was a terrible, terrible thing. But you're faced with the decision, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to respond? How are we going to respond in those situations? I'm going to share one with you guys today that, that I have walked through, that my family has walked through. But I was sitting um, in Greene County Jail, and, um, man, I was faced with that same decision. I was faced with an opportunity where I, where I could literally almost hear the Lord saying, what are you going to do about it? What now? What are you going to do about it, Brendan? And I just remember reflecting on my life so far, and I remember thinking, how did it get here? How did I get here? And I remember thinking about all my choices. I, think I was thinking about um, all the things that had taken place leading up to that moment. And I want you guys to know that although it's probably not sitting in jail, you guys 
you've faced a similar situation. You've received news that, that hurt, that was painful, that distracted you from all of God's goodness. And in my example, I brought it upon myself. I made choices that, that landed my butt in jail, right? That's what happened. Nobody else did that but me. And some of your choices have landed you somewhere today that is uncomfortable, that hurts, that maybe it's embarrassing. Maybe it feels like everybody's against you or nobody's on your side. Regardless, you're in a situation where you have to decide, am I going to allow my situation to keep me down or am I going to allow this situation to mold me into who God wants me to be? And that's where I was at that day. And many of you have been in that place before. Life throws a variety of trials at us that can be painful, that can hurt, that can be un uncomfortable. But man, I want you to leave here knowing today they can also be helpful. Amen? Like in my situation, man, being where I was at, yeah, it, it sucked. I, I, I did not enjoy it one bit. But looking back at it today, because of how I responded to it, it was helpful. It saved my life. And, and maybe your situation is not as dramatic. Maybe, um, man, it, it doesn't look the same as mine. But I promise you, no matter how it looks, he's trying to teach you something. Do you believe that today? And it might be hard, but I believe by the end of, of this message, you will believe that. We don't associate pain with being helpful, but rather harmful. But God uses pain to grow us. God uses pain to, to shape us and mold us into the person that he desires us to be. And man, it was painful. I mean, don't you think it was painful the way I had let my family down, making that phone call and, and telling them what was going on and telling them, that I let him down once again. I had been letting him down my whole life. I had been doing things that embarrassed them. And, and, and they, they, they never stopped answering the phone. And that's a whole nother conversation, but it was tough. It was hard. And I, and I had a choice to make. I had a choice to either walk out what the next seven years had to look like or I could have just thrown in the towel and done what was easy, what I had always done. We cannot let our trials be or become our identity. Amen? And man, I, I, sometimes I get on Facebook, and this might offend you. This might, this might hurt your feelings a little bit. But for some reason, our, our trials have become our identity, our pain and our hurt. I mean, we just broadcast it for the whole world to see. And it's who we are. People log in and they see your name and then they see that. And that's what they remember. That's what I remember. And we, we've just gotten to this place in culture, especially where every single trial that comes along is the worst thing that's ever happened to us. And I'm going to tell you today why that is, why it feels that way for you. And how it's not true. I'm going to preach a sermon to you guys titled Growing Pains. Everybody say Growing Pains. Growing. Growth takes place through our pain. Just like exercise can be painful, it can also be rewarding. Any of you, uh, you gym rats in here, man, you go to the gym three to five days a week and you hurt yourself. You literally put yourself through pain because you know it'll pay off, right? It's the same with our spiritual walk. It's the same with, with what comes our way in this life. God is trying to give us an opportunity to grow through these things. And he doesn't, he doesn't place on us all these situations. He allows some of them to happen, but many of them are placed on us by ourselves. They're choices that we've made. We've put ourselves in this corner. We've put ourselves in this box. At least that's how it was for me. And then some of them are brought about by other people that they have their own free will and they can do whatever they want to do. 
and it produces pain in our lives because of their choices, that is very real as well. And I would never downplay that. But what I want you to learn and what James wants us to learn in this text today is that is no excuse to just stay where we're at. That is no excuse to just quit growing because of the things that we're facing. Back up to verse 3, it says, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, to grow. James knows that there's no growth without the test. And I want to tell you the very same thing here today. If you are not tested, if you are not exercising your faith, if you are not being stretched, you're not growing. You're probably not growing. And you're not going to know if your faith is growing until you're faced with something. And, and for some reason now, it doesn't eat your lunch like it did last month, right? It doesn't make it to Facebook this time. And I'm telling you, as your spiritual maturity and your endurance and your perseverance begins to grow, not every little thing is the worst thing that has happened to you. Not every little thing needs to be on Facebook. Not every little thing needs to be texted about and shared with the rest of your, um, your family or your friends because you've learned who to take it to. You've learned how it really gets taken care of. Amen? And that's what I want for you guys more than anything today. That's my desire. That's my heart. That's Pastor Dylan's desire and his heart is that we would equip you guys. We would teach you guys what it means to live a Christian life. And it is not having control. It is not having that steering wheel in your hands all the time. In fact, that, that steering wheel was never created for your hands. It was created for his. And for some reason, man, we push him right over, we get in that driver's seat, and we think we got it figured out. And what happens every single time? We crash and we burn, right? What happened to me every single time? I was living a life of addiction, and every single time, I tried to get in that driver's seat. Every time I tried to take the driver's wheel, I crashed and I burned and I had to make that phone call and I had to walk into my parents' house with my head down and say, well, here we are again. And I had to face it and it hurt every single time. So how do we know or how do we go about developing spiritual endurance through the trials? James teaches us. In verse 2, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. So the other day, this will relate to a lot of you because you all live in Marshfield, most of you. The other day when <clears throat> baseballs were raining from the sky, I would imagine most of you guys were not jumping for joy, right? I would imagine that was a little bit frustrating. Uh, honestly, it was like, I was wondering if the world was ending. I was like, I've never seen anything like this. And I have a metal roof, and so it sounded like a shotgun over and over and over. And, you know, that's a funny example of, of a trial that we've all endured recently. Um, there was an opportunity for joy. But some of you are in here today, you're going through things that are not funny. They hurt they're embarrassing, they're painful, and you don't want anybody to know. And so you put on this facade that everything's okay, that you've got it together, I don't need your help, and Lord, I definitely don't need your help, just stay away. And you're just white-knuckling through these trials, and you're just forcing your way through it. And if there is this pattern in your life of you doing that, if there's this pattern in your life of learning the same lesson over and over and over and over, are we growing? Or are you just learning the same thing over and over and stuck in that season of life? And, and I want you to know, man, like it is not an easy thing to do what we're talking about today. The odds are against you. If you were, if you were a heroin addict like I was, the odds were against me to ever have a new life, to ever be free. If you've ever struggled with meth, 
If you've ever struggled with alcohol, the odds are against you. But can I tell you in this place that whether you struggle with those things or not, the odds are still against you. If you're not an alcoholic, if you're not a drug addict, they're still against you. You have an enemy who desires to destroy you. You have an enemy that is throwing trials at you left and right. And in the same way that I had to fall to my knees is the same way that we're all going to have to fall to our knees if we're ever going to progress, if we're ever going to grow in our relationship and in our spiritual endurance. And that's what James is talking about. It applies to each and every one of us if we're a Christ follower. And if you're not a Christ follower in this place, I pray that today, (laughs) I pray that you are going through something hard and for the first time in your life, you feel like there's a chance. That's what I pray for today. I feel like there's probably somebody in here who is not saved and has walked in and they're like, oh my gosh, he is talking to me. I pray that, man, you are walking through something that you're finally ready to say, I can't do this on my own because that's what it takes. That is what will change your life forever. I promise you. It's not attending church. It's not attending a life group. It's not going to a certain church in town. It's surrendering each and every ounce of your heart to your maker. That's the only thing that's the only thing that'll work. That's the only thing that has proven itself true. So back up in verse 2, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. It says when not if. When trials come your way. You see, Christianity is not the absence of trials, but it is the assurance of God with you through those trials. That is what Christianity is. And I think sometimes we get it a little twisted, don't we? We think, man, I go to church, I tithe, I do all the right things. I give above my tithe. I'm, I answer the phone when people call me. Nothing bad should happen in my life. Nothing bad should take place. I don't deserve what's happening right now. And we get into this mode where, we're, where we've literally been spoiled. We've literally been coddled to believe that that's what Christianity is. And can I tell you today, it's not. That is not what Christianity is. Christianity on full display is walking through the biggest storms of your life and not wavering and not throwing in the towel. And as I was sitting in that jail cell, man, I had to make a decision. I have been down that road before. I have been down that road dozens and dozens of times. And for whatever reason, that day, it clicked. For whatever reason, I just finally began to believe God for what his word said. And when his, when his word says that each trial is an opportunity to produce perseverance, he means it. And you fast forward through my life, and I, and I have not been perfect. That's not what I want you to hear. But what has taken place in my life, only God could do. Only God could do. And yes, I've had to make decisions but he's, he's honored the obedience. And I have sinned. I have fallen short. But what has happened is he knows my heart is genuine now. And he had to break me. He had to crush me to get to that place. And it's possible that he's going to have to do the same with you. It might look different. I pray to God that it will. But we've got to get to this place where we say, Lord, Just like that song said, you can have every area of my life. I don't want to hold anything from you. Troubles are tests that challenge our faith. When troubles of any kind come your way, they are challenging your faith. They're challenging your faith. They're stretching your faith. They're increasing what God desires to increase. Does anybody in here believe that he desires to increase your faith? Do you believe that these situations that pop up, 
are meant to help you in the long run. And I'm not saying every situation that pops up is from him. Like I said, we, we mess it up. But God deliberately puts things in our path at times in our life. And he's saying, I wonder how they're going to respond here. I wonder if they're going to honor me in this situation because that is bad. I wonder if they will trust me to come through. And time and time again in my life, <clears throat> I'll just share financially, um, we own a small business and I, I've seen him come through time and time again. There's been months, and it's, usually, it's almost every month, it feels like, where I'm like, oh man, Lord, you're gonna have to come through. Like, I don't know how we're gonna pay our bills, blah, 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 and, and, I, and I just submit that to him. And because he's came through so many times, that situation affects me differently now. Like before, I used to, to panic. I used to freak out. I used to, um, man, just, just get real crazy about uh, that situation and that topic. And as time has went on and I've seen how faithful he desires to be, I don't do that anymore. There's been growth in that area. And just like many of you, there are areas in your life that he is, he's trying to grow you in. He's trying to increase your faith. Amen? Let's talk about joy in that text. An opportunity for joy. The word count is a financial term, and it means to evaluate. When James says to count it all joy, he's encouraging the readers to evaluate the way that we look at trials. Most often we evaluate trials as something that we want to avoid. We evaluate trials as something that, that we want to do without. But James is telling us to count it as joy. And it sounds crazy, man. It sounds funny. But if we can look at our trials that way, if we can look at our trials as Man, something that he's trying to teach me, something that, that he's trying to grow me in, it changed your whole perspective. Joy is an inner attitude that is not circumstantial. It doesn't go away. It doesn't, it's not fleeting just because of the things going on around us, our circumstances. Joy is not circumstantial. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is something that is only based on the things that are happening right now, the things that, that might happen in the future, and it's fleeting because it's circumstantial. When those circumstances are over, so is your happiness, right? Are you with me today? Your happiness is circumstantial, but as Christ followers, our joy is not. It doesn't have to be circumstantial. Verse 3 says, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. When we keep trusting God through our trials, our faith in him grows. When I saw the Lord come through the way he did throughout that, that literal trial that I was in, my faith in him grew. And I want you guys to think about the trials that you're in right now. I want you to think about the things that you are enduring right now. They seem really big right now, don't they? They seem really huge. They seem overwhelming. They seem like you will never surmount this trial right now. Correct? And I want you to think about the trials you've already made it through. How big do those seem today? How big do those feel today? They don't feel big anymore, right? They feel like a win. They feel like a, a moment that you can look back on and say, Lord, you've been faithful. You've been with me through, the, through all of it. He desires to grow you in this season so that you're equipped for the next one. The next season in your life, man, it could totally be based off how you respond in this season. And I think sometimes it's hard for us to look at life that way. I think it's hard for us to look past the here and the now and the things that we can see and feel right now. But when we begin to think about the future, when we begin to think about what is he, what is he possibly trying to teach me 
during this trial, it shifts our perspective and it allows these roots to grow deep into the soil and wide into the soil. And man, it produces Christians that are, that are no longer learning the same lesson over and over and over and over. And I've been there, man. I've learned it over and over and over. But man, God desires for us to be Christians that are growing, not just staying stuck in the same lesson for decades of our life or years of your life, or maybe it's just been a couple seasons, but we need to reflect on God's word and ask ourselves, am I learning? Am I growing? Am I receiving what he's wanting me to receive right now? Endurance is fully developed. As a runner gains endurance by suffering through another mile, Christians also gain the ability to gain endurance through their trials. Each experience grants us a deeper, stronger level of trust. Each experience in your life, man, it grants you a new perspective, a new outlook on your creator. And man, if you will allow these moments, if you will allow these trials to not just, just eat your lunch every single time they pop up and not make it to Facebook and not make it to your group text and not make it and I'm not saying don't ask for prayer, but I'm saying if you're learning the same lesson over and over and over, I just have to wonder if we're growing. But if you will take this season, if you will make the most of, of what he's trying to teach you today in this, in this trial, man, it could change the perspective. It could change the, the projection of, of things that you can't even see right now. And that's what God desires to do. The one who can trust God without stopping, without wavering, no matter how terrible the trial, will have arrived at perfection, complete maturity. Verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. As we continue to endure through the trials, we will receive crowns. And there are crowns on this side of heaven, and there are crowns on the other side of heaven. Some of the crowns that I believe the Lord has allowed me to receive on this side of heaven, man, are on my bride, Jessica. We were in the middle of that trial, and she decided that she was crazy enough to still get married. And she had no business doing that. Like, we'd have, we had no idea what was going to happen. The prosecutors wanted seven years, and, and they were adamant about it, and they went to bat so that I would receive it. But, man, Jessica and I, we, we had already learned that he was faithful. We had already learned that he would carry us through. We had already learned that no matter what that judge had to say that day, that God was still good. Amen. And we, we went through this trial, and, and the verdict came. And, man, I didn't have to go to prison. I didn't have to spend five to seven years away from her. And we, we got to start a family. We have three kids today. We started a business. I'm on staff at the well. The list goes on and on and on. The crowns that you will receive on this side of heaven if you endure the testing. It wasn't fun, man. I had to see my probation officer every month or every two weeks or every week. That wasn't fun. I had to go do these classes. I had, to, I had to apologize and mean it. And I had to make amends with my family and my friends. And it was embarrassing. And it hurt. But I knew that the Lord was asking me to do it. I knew that he was saying, if you'll, if you'll just trust me, if you'll just hold on to me, while we walk through this thing together, there are crowns for you, son. And, and Christianity, man, it doesn't say you're gonna be rich. It doesn't say you're gonna be healed from cancer. It doesn't say that nothing bad is ever gonna happen to you. You're never gonna lose a family member. You're never gonna get divorced. You're never gonna be broken up with. That's not what Christianity says. And I think that we as as ministers or preachers 
Um, I know Pastor Dylan feels the same way. We are doing you a disservice if we get up here and act like you're not going to go through anything hard. It's a lie. You are going to go through things that are hard. You are going to go through things that, cha- that challenge you and stretch your faith, that agitate you, that, that seem pointless. But man, if you'll just do it, if you'll just trust the process, he will show up for you every time. Amen? I've seen him do it time and time again. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7, it says, So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So church, I wanna ask you this morning, are you growing through your trials? Are you growing through those painful seasons that you're in right now? Or are you just learning the same lesson over and over and over? It's miserable. I've tried it. I've done it. That is not what God desires for you. But if you just continue to stiff arm them, how are you ever gonna grow? If you just continue to stiff arm those people in your life that are trying to walk beside you, that are trying to bring you to an obedience that you're not currently living in, how can you grow? How can we grow? I'm preaching to myself. There are areas in my life today that that God is challenging me in still. And I'm a challenger. I like to challenge people. I don't like to be challenged. But that is what God does. That is how God operates. So when trials come, what's your approach? What's your, your, your gut reaction, your first instinct? Is it to read? Is it to pray? Is it to fast? Is it to seek godly counsel? Or do you just run? Retreat, isolate, binge watch Netflix, use substances, run to social media and put it on blast for everyone to see. You know, I found it funny, like all that hail comes to Marshfield and people are just putting it all over Facebook like we don't already know. Like we, we know, you know what I mean? You're not the only one. And it it was just hard. I was laughing. I was like, yep, yep, you and 5,000 other people. But let's put it on Facebook because it's the worst thing that has ever happened. You know what I'm saying? And that's a silly example. But man, if every trial that comes your way is the worst thing you've ever went through, I don't think you've completely surrendered that season that you're in right now. He desires to move you through that. He desires to to advance you. He desires to build you up. He desires to push you through so that you can be a vessel, so that you can be useful. I was useless before God. I was useless before I got arrested. It took that. That's what it took. It took embarrassment. It took being honest. It took saying, hey, Dylan, hey, John, hey, Selena, I've messed up again and I need your help. Hey, Lord, I got nobody else, man. I got you and that's it. And this is what he's done. This is how he's carried me through. It's been almost nine years since I've been high. (laughs) Praise be to God, yeah. But he's just been so faithful. I couldn't ignore it, man. He deserves my worship. He deserves my praise. He deserves your worship. He deserves your praise. Even if this season hurts right now, he's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to you. Trials will either grow you stronger or keep you where you're at longer. They will either grow you stronger or keep you where you're at longer. And Satan loves that, man. Satan loves 
when you just stay right where you're at, when you retreat, when you isolate, when you just take the steering wheel and say, you know what, I need control right now. This is how I feel in this moment, so this is what I'm gonna do. And that's how we operate, nine times out of 10. It's been said that this is the least resilient generation that has ever walked the earth. How's that feel? When you hear those words that you're, you're part of the least resilient group of people that has ever walked the earth. Probably stings, probably hurts a little bit. I know that it does that for me. I'm, I refuse to be known for that. I refuse to be known as, as just a wuss that, that couldn't surrender my, my pride and my will over to the Lord. And man, if you're in this place today and you're like, screw you, dude, I am hurting, this is real, I'm with you. I hear you, I acknowledge that, but I am doing you a disservice if I just let you stay there. Any preacher or teacher or apostle or fill in the blank that just allows you to live in that place, I don't know, man, I won't do it. I will not do it. Each time we talk, I will bring up surrendering to the Lord if I feel like you haven't. And I expect about five or six people to do it for me. And they do it and it helps. When there's not enough tension in your life, you get soft. And, and like I said, we like to go through life and we like to avoid the tension. We like to do whatever it takes to, to not experience it. It is not until you welcome that tension that you will grow. Take that for what it's worth. It is not until you welcome that tension that you will grow. Hear that today and let it soak into your soul. Hear that today, hear God's word straight out of the book of James and let it soak into your soul. If you're in this place today and you're in pain or this is a painful season, I'm here today to tell you that he desires for you to grow today, now, more than ever. That is why you're hearing this message today because of the season that you're in. Each sermon series that The Well puts on, man, they are anointed. They have been worked on for months. We don't just draw them up this week and preach them. Like we wait and we hear from the Lord. And we say, Lord, what do you wanna teach these people? How do you wanna speak to them? And so if you're in pain today, if you're walking through a season that, that has just sucked, today, more than ever, he is trying to grow you. Amen? This pain is setting you up for great joy. This season is setting you up for the next season. This moment in your life right now could affect your life gravely nine years from today. Take it from me, I promise you. There's no way around it. There's no way around these, these opportunities for growth. But we must endure the hardship to gain resilience. I want you guys to stand. Father, before we go into worship, I just feel that there's a lot of people in here that are hurting. There's a lot of people in here that feel like they have the right to be in pain. And God, you don't dismiss their pain, you absorb it. And God, you don't push off how they're feeling right now, you welcome it. The God, it takes two. There's a table for two and they've gotta come and sit down at it and, and be with you and be in your presence. And so God, that is what I'm praying for right now. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, would you come into this auditorium? Would you welcome them into this table? And would they have a seat with you and they begin to, to peel back those layers? Begin to reveal to them the things that they're holding on to. Reveal to them the things that you're trying to grow, the season that they're in and why it's there. 
God, I pray that they would respond in Jesus' name. Amen.